We use surname tables to help us organize our files, know what to keep and who we actually are related and all these documents that we have. We use them to find DNA discoveries and recognize names we overlook in genealogical documents. But before we get to that, welcome. This is Family History Fanatics, where we help you understand DNA, climb your family tree, and write your ancestors' stories along the way. So this is a surname table. Notice it's not fancy. It's not designed to have all of the information on your family tree. Just a quick reference guide where at the top in the grandparent row, that is your male names, your male ancestral names. And below that, those are the names that are the female married that married into your line. We'll go ahead and show you how to create your surname table step by step. In this video, we're going to use Ancestry to build our tree, but you can use Family Search, My Heritage, or any program that you have. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your four great grandparents and you're going to take their surnames, the males and the females for row one, and you're going to put them in your table just like so. So the first surname is that first one at the top of the chart or if you're using a fan chart, the furthest one on the left. And then you're gonna go around your fan or down your pedigree and you're going to add each name. So like so. So my paternal grandfather is named Geisler. My paternal grandmother's surname is Zemstein. Maternal grandfather was Brown. Maternal grandmother is Long. Make sense? If you have any questions, make sure you use the comment section below and I'll make sure that I respond to make sure that you can be successful. Now, we're gonna go back to our pedigree chart and we're gonna grab the next surnames. Notice that we're gonna go to the great grandparents, but we're only going to grab the maternal surnames because Geisler already appears in my chart. Townley does not. That's the name that's covered up by the one. Zumstein already appears in the chart. Brown already appears in my chart. And then in this case, Hankinson, um, there was a name change. We'll talk about that later. But we're, those names already appear in the chart. So I'm going to grab the maternal ones. If you do have a name change, we'll have another video that shows how you mark name changes on your chart. But for now, let's just keep building. So now we're gonna take the one, two, three, and four. So Geisler married Peak, Zamstein married Comfort, Brown married Townsend, and Long married Anderson. Well, really it's Hankinson, but we'll come back to that later in a future video. That's pretty easy. Actually, some of you could already have filled this out without going back to the chart, but step by step, we're gonna go back to the chart and then we're, the pedigree chart, and then we're gonna extract the surnames to our surname table. So now once again, we're gonna go back to our pedigree chart and now we're in the second great grandparents column. You're gonna grab the surnames that married to the surnames that are already on your chart, but pay attention where the numbers are going. So in the surname table, number one and number two are stacked on top of each other three and four are stacked on top of each other. If you try to just go across the row and one, two, three, four, you're gonna have the wrong people marrying in your lines and that's gonna make the surname table really confusing. It gets worse in sub subsequent generations, so make sure you pay attention to where the numbers are on your pedigree chart and where they go on your surname table. Now, visually, this is what's different from the previous surname table. I just went around the fan and wrote the names down and went around the fan and wrote the names down. But in this new version, I can always know whom, who married whom based on where people are in the generations and where they are in the columns. So notice how the Geisler married it's at the top, so it's gonna marry the first green. And the peak is going to marry Townley, the second yellow, because it's the, the second green, it was the first yellow. 
Here's another way to look at it. Just pretend that you pick, you cut out Geisler and Peak, and then Hoppe and Townley, and then you shifted it right next to each other. Now, can you visually see what I'm talking about? So every time you add a new generation, you're going to have a color and you cut off that wedge and stack it up next to the ones that are above. You'll see what I mean throughout the remainder of this video. Now for the next step, what we need to do is we need to shift our pedigree chart so that we can see uh, more of our ancestors than what is on here. You could go here and click each of these arrows to get the names, but I found that if we will just move this person to this spot, then I'll grab the ancestors names that I need. So with the tree shifted, I now have my paternal line showing, just my paternal line. So I need to slow down and you do too. This is when things start to get really confusing, but if you'll slow down, it'll make a lot of sense. So notice how the numbers are going to change. From top to bottom, it's not one, two, three, four anymore. Now it's one, three, two, four, five, seven, six, eight. So take a moment and look at that. These are the surnames you're gonna grab, and then you're gonna go put them in the surname table. Now pay particular attention to where the numbers are. In column one, it's one, three, to four, column two is five, seven, six, eight, and the other ones are not on this view because we're just looking at the paternal branch. So slowly take from this slide, one, three, two, four, five, seven, six, eight, and put it into your table so that your names look like this. Then go and repeat the process and do your maternal line one generation back. Grab all of those ancestors for your third great grandparents and fill it in that way. And once again, you will always know who married whom because you already had grandparents, first grandparents, second great grandparents. And if you then cut the wedge off of the purple section and line it up, when you read across, you should always be able to know who married whom. Now we're gonna to return to our pedigree chart and we're going to have shifted once again, moving a up the paternal line, moving to them to that home space so that we can see the top section of the paternal line. And the numbers are going to change again, which means you need to slow down even more. So, now the numbers are one, five, three, seven, confused yet? Two, six, four, eight. Go ahead and pause the video, go compare your chart, and then proceed. So now when you look at the fourth great grandparents, and thankfully that's the last one we're going to use, your number is just, all of them are gonna be in that first column. One, five, three, seven, two, six, four, eight. <laughs> and then you're going to take those names and add them to the chart. If you ever have a surname where you don't know who the ancestor is, or you know the first name of the woman, but you don't know what her maiden name is, leave it blank. Don't put anything there. It's okay to have a blank space. You don't have to fill everything in. But when you're done in the first column, you will know that Geisler married someone in, you don't know what their surname was. Peek married young. Hoppe need to figure out what her surname was. Townley, Porter, and so on and so forth. So now all you have to do is go back and repeat the steps for the maternal side as well as the fourth generation fourth great grandparents that you haven't completed. When you are done, now you have a powerful reference tool to help you again be organized 
recognize DNA matches when there's no through lines or theory of relativity, or recognize names as witnesses and neighbors on documents that you see in your genealogical research. If you want more tips on how to become a better genealogist, check out this playlist here. And to see our recent video, check this section right here. But be sure to check the description for a free guide to 10 online genealogy resources you have to try.